Hello, with the recent patch we got the skill tree changes and because of that we're gonna have a lot of different builds now on both sides as a family member as well as for the victims. And the good old builds are not available for the most characters in this game anymore. So you have uh, not a lot of variety anymore so you're kind of more into fixed builds which you need to play or we can play. But then in the end, I didn't did, did a great job and a lot of the most broken combinations are gone now. This sadly also counts for Baba. So the good old scout, hysterical strength, violin, one shot, deadly Baba is not possible anymore. But since they changed the scout, it's not like that important anyways. So today we're going to talk about Baba's new skill tree and his new loadout. And as always, I would say Baba is the most important character in this entire game. A lot of people thought hands can replace him or you don't need to play him. But whenever we play, the games just feel completely different if you have a ladder phase. The strength about ladder phase is his mobility, so he can be everywhere. He can just rotate in the middle of a map. And if your teammates need help or they try to overrun your teammate, they just call for help and you go over there and you help him out. And no other family member can react to situations as fast as Letterface. Same goes for Nancy. So if you have a Nancy in your team. And she will use her ability and then say, okay, a victim is here and there. By the time a normal family member makes it over there, the victim is most likely gone. But with Letterface, you just go there, you see them and you kill them. And yeah, most of you may say now, okay, the scout is not available anymore because of the, the one shot threat is gone, but no. Since they changed the scout and the damage reduction is not there anymore, you will always be able to one shot the victims if you position yourself properly, even if they have 50 toughness. So now we're going to talk about his attribute points. As always, you want to put all your points in savagery. This means now if you have savagery, your overhead, uh, overhead will deal 80 damage and uh, base M1 will deal 30 damage, which obviously adds up to 140 damage with an overhead and two M1s. And if the victims play 50 toughness, they're going to have 139 HP on max HP. So yeah, you with 50 savagery, you will one shot everybody with your combo if done perfectly. And obviously not everyone is running 50 toughness and not everyone is always going to be full HP. So 50 savagery is just a no-brainer. And the reason I put points in blood harvesting is back in the days it was just nice to, to have the points in blood harvesting because you got more hit, uh, more blood per hit. Which means you had your blood stacked quicker and easier. So you kill someone with an overhead M1 and then you have max blood which was not possible with full blood harvesting. I still do like to put all my blunts in part harvesting because now, well, you don't need your bile and perk, but you're gonna have 100 blood and you can go and feed that cramper now. And having endurance on ladder phase is, well, doesn't matter, right? Because he, he always has uh, no stamina problems. So he can go overhead and sprint and then has no stamina and keeps sprinting and he can also do M1s even though he has no stamina, not like any other family member. But yeah, obviously with more stamina you could do hits faster, so the hits frequency as it says is a little bit quicker. So you maybe if you struggle to get the one shot combo in, you can put that out. But I never run into problems with that, I have no problems killing them all. And also with the new perk you should always be possible most of the time overhead and one m1 is enough and yeah if you don't want to bother about getting grandpa leveled up um beating him maxing him out then yeah put the blood puts on the blood harvesting and put him in endurance but in the end not gonna lie whatever you take down here on those two does not really matter as long as you have 50 savagery but yeah getting grandpa to level one especially since baba can now have exterior one can be super helpful you get an early kill you leave basement, you go to grandpa, get a level bomb if your teammate didn't, and now you have exterior. And the game should be over. So now we're going to talk about his new skill tree. 
some people if you really struggle i mean i had a lot of arguments with people about if you want to go big swings or scout me personally i hate playing bubble without scout it just feels wrong there are way too many loops in this game which you can't play without scout so i'm gonna take the example um slaughterhouse basement if you're in bone room right where the fuse box is right the small little gap there this is an infinite if you don't have scout and there are way 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 more loops in this game which are unplayable if you do not have scout and as i also said in the beginning right being able to go somewhere and help your teammates if they need to get overrun or if you patrol outside of family house the generator and car battery uh, having scout is just a no-brainer also because he is just the fastest memory in the game with the with his overhead then it even makes more sense to even speed it up if you struggle a lot and if you do hit your overheads a lot and if the victims do spin you a lot and if you run in all these problems going big swings is easier so i always call this the the, the noob va variation the the baby variation because you are not as fast so you you cannot run past victims spinning is also harder because yeah you while they spin you just don't run past them right but even if that happens to you i would still recommend putting a lot of time or the effort into running scout because once you mastered scout on baba you will never want to go back it just feels wrong and bad running without scout and now that you know that obviously like you said if you want to do something else the big swings you just go left then you can maybe have serrated and a vile end you have the same build kind of like back in the days but if you want to do scout you need to go middle and while you're going middle in what i realized the best one to get a little bit more damage is rough cut so it's kind of like a serrated a bleed out effect and that means when you hit that sometimes even you do an overhead and then one and then the victims are going to bleed out because you deal seven more extra damage and you don't even need two M1s. So that's we just go straight and you go metal. And then you have your scout and you have your exterior alarm and rough cut. And then we're talking about his third perks or his perks in general. So what I say is most important one is scout, right? Your movement speed is higher, but your stamina regeneration is slower but yeah like i just said baba doesn't need stamina so this is only a straight above no downsides for him at all and the second perk i would always go rough cut just so in some scenarios because the victims is so close to a gap you will not be able to get two m1s in uh, so you can also still one shot with an overhead and a single m1 like you were able to do back in the days with his terrible strength and wild end so rough cut is just a, a nice thing it's kind of said it does not stack so for example serrated if you hit them uh it stacks and the bleed out is longer with rough cut that's not the case so rough cut will always steal after you last hit seven damage so one hp per second so seven extra damage right and then for the dirt perk i think you cannot go wrong with blood banker if you want to so you get even more blood and then uh, feed grandpa if you want to get some meme kills right if, with victims slamming a door and stuff like that you can even go tenderizer i would say even siphon is not as bad it's kind of like blood banker right you have more blood harvesting so you get more blood i do not know which one will give you in the end more blood per kill so yeah i would still guess it has to be blood banker but right it's kind of doing the same purpose getting grandpa leveled up better uh and what i started to really like is down the rabbit hole so the reason why i played down the rabbit hole is first of all if you play with randoms right and they're not going to call out that someone is swelling and you're in, down in the basement because you're chasing someone or you just feel you're giving them a lot of pressure and all of a sudden you see someone highlighted and you go there and you kill them and also there are scenarios where you see a gate highlighted with exterior alarm oh, oh my god okay someone is in carbidery you run all the way to car battery, you open the gate, you go in there, you don't see the victim on the car or on the gate. And now you're kind of stuck there, right? You cannot really leave because the victim could be hiding in a bush. And so you need to like search all the bushes or you need to hope for Nancy to highlight them. Or if you know from the points, okay, 
it was a Julie who opened the gate and then Cook highlights a Julie in a basement or by Grandpa, right? Only then you can feel safe to leave Carbidery. Because what victims sometimes do is they go and open the gate and then they can hear already that Leatherface is coming. And before anything happens, they just instantaneously take the well and they'd be like, <laughs> okay, now Leatherface is stuck over there. So in this scenario, down the rabbit hole is, in my, op important, in my opinion, the most value. Because if you go there and then all of a sudden you see a well highlight and you also kind of need to know your well locations down in the basement, right? Which one leads to which? Or you at least need communications with your teammates and said, no, 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 nobody well here or whatever. And then you know, okay, I don't have to be here. And then that the upside even better is that the victim will be highlighted 17 seconds after that, which is a long time. And the victim does not know that, that he is highlighted right now. So what a lot of victims do is they take the well and they instantly beeline to the basement exit and come out again. And you have a wall egg, so you know exactly what the victim is up to. You can maybe even go down there if you realize he's in a bad spot in the basement and go and get a surprise wall hack here and the victim is going to think that you are cheating. So yeah, this is uh, my recommended loadout. Uh, I've been running quite well lately with it. It's still super deadly and also a little bit fun with down the rabbit hole. You need to get used to paying attention to that. But once you did it, I think it's, it feels amazing. And yeah, then with his grandpa perk, like I said, the only one you want to run is exterior alarm. If you don't run exterior alarm, I would recommend running no grandpa perk at all. But yeah, like, why would you not run exterior alarm, right? It's like one of the best three perks in the game. Suffocating grip, nobody escapes hell, and exterior alarm. These are the three I would pick. And I don't know if I would even pick all three of them, or maybe just stick to one of them to secure it. But yeah, that's obviously up to you, up to your teammates, up to your playstyle, whatever. But yeah, this is the grandpa perk. And yeah, in my opinion, the newest, newest kill animation is just the best, right? It's kind of quick. It, Super nice. It just feels, feels nice to look at that kill animation. Um, yeah, and it's not it's not taking too much time, so yeah, don't go for it if you want to. Otherwise, if you don't have it, I would take the the base animation. It's not as cool, but it's a little bit quicker, so you don't have to spend so much time in the killing animation if that's very important to you. For me personally, it is. Because a victim can unlock a gate right next to you if you in the killing animation, right? And then last but not least, we are going to talk about his ability. So with his ability, nothing has really changed. I would still always recommend you grinding hard. So as long as you are level 1, the moment you reach level 1, you take the middle one. Because what happens if you're not level 2... Um, you're going to stall. So you're going for an overhead, and most of the time it does not matter how you play it, you're going to stall. But this is still 10% less chance that's going to happen, so take the metal one. Once you get level 2, um, it's hard to say, most of my life I've been running with the right one. But that's because I'm also streaming, right? So most of the time I'm reading chat, so sometimes I just run around overheading, just like auto clicking my right mouse button while I read something or whatever or you play with randoms and you try to figure out the location where your teammates are and what they're doing and you pay too much attention to your family thing you can also overheat so in th these scenarios you have uh, less penalty so whenever you overheat that means your changer hits 100% mm, you have a 50% less uh, stun time or time so you can turn the chain on quicker a friend of mine though who's a very very strong bubba told me that he's running this one i cannot confirm if it takes longer for you to actually reach the overhead so you reach the 75 percent mark that you start running overhead i think you do but he also said it's easier to keep your chainsaw at 99 and having a chainsaw at 99 percent when you're going for an overhead is very important because then you are going to be able to get the two hits in also very quickly without stalling and you deal more damage because the hotter your chainsaw the more damage so yeah obviously that's up to you still can't tell both have ups and downs depending on 
if you find yourself overheating a lot, you can try this one, right? And see, ah, okay, hmm, that doesn't help. I still overheat a lot. And I would say go this one. But in the end, I think both of them are super fine. It does not really matter. Like I said, yep, I've been trying this lately. And then, doesn't matter. Don't even read the other ones. They are just straight up bad. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter your place. That doesn't matter what you do. You always need the level 2 in the middle. Because now, all of a sudden, of level 0, you stall every overhead. Level 2, you will never stall again. It's 20% apparently, but for me, it feels like 99% more uh, stall resistant. And yeah, this is also just straight up trolling, and this is also just straight up trolling. So yeah, you want to insta start. So you start the game, you instantly start your chainsaw, you get an action, you kill them, you hunt them. And also if you overhead or you stall or you do a gallow kill or whatever, right, your chainsaw gets turned off, um, you also start them quicker. So this is just a no-brainer. I always would recommend this. And yeah, trust me, don't even read the other one. Well, that's it. That's uh, my new and updated Baba loadout for the new and reworked skill tree. I hope this was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're going to make some use out of it on your next games. And in case you did, make sure to leave a like. And as always, if you feel super nice, make sure to comment in the video below or subscribe to my channel in case you didn't already. Good luck in your next games and bye bye.